Hello everyone, welcome back to Love Notions. I'm Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery, and today we are, or I am here to talk about the Margot Peplum um, and the corresponding Little Girls pattern, which is the Maggie Peplum top. Uh, but that is today's Feature Friday pattern, which means both patterns are $5 today, which is February 23rd, 2024 only. Um, but Hopefully you're going to have a lot, there's going to be a lot in this video that's going to be very helpful for you, whether you're making your own Margot and or Maggie, or whether or not you're just learning to sew with knits on a sewing machine. So I'm going to go over the pattern a little bit here with you, showing you my newest version of the Margot. And then we're going to go over five tips that I have for you when it comes to sewing knits on a sewing machine. Okay, so like I mentioned, we are going to be discussing the Margot Peplum Top. This is a wonderful knit top pattern, um, and it also, this is a corresponding to the Little Girls pattern, which is the Maggie, um, which is the same pattern, just miniaturized for our little ladies. <laughs> but this pattern is for knits, and it features um, a few different bodice options, which are just the standard plain front bodice or a princess seamed bodice. We have multiple sleeve options, um, sleeve length options. It is a straight sleeve, but multiple sleeve length options for uh, you to create the peplum of your dreams um, with three different peplum skirt styles. Uh, there is a flared skirt style, which I've used on this one, a gathered, and then a really cute pleated version. So that is, you know, as with all of Notion's patterns, you get a lot of bang for your buck uh, with all the variations that are available in each of uh, the patterns that Love Notions um, sells. So again, great options for creating peplums. Let's talk a little bit about peplums and um, how they, um, the styling of them just a little bit. And we'll kind of go through that with mine here. Uh, like I mentioned, this pattern is for knit fabrics. Um, it can be anything with, um, drape, if you're wanting something with a little bit swishier peplum, such as a rayon or viscose spandex um, jersey, or it could be something with a little bit more body. If you're wanting your peplum to be a little bit more of a feature um, or have something that stands away from the body a little bit more, you can use uh, fabrics with a little bit more body, such as a cotton spandex jersey, or like I've done here, I've used a ponte, which is a little bit thicker fabric. Also perfectly um, acceptable would be double brushed polys, um, ITY knits, um, basically anything that you would make a t-shirt out of, you could definitely use for this pattern. Other options that I really like about this peplum um, are, you could extend the peplum skirt on uh, this pattern to create a dress of your choice, or if you want something a little less, um, full in the skirt, you can shorten the peplum to make it more of a t-shirt with a little bit of a peplum flare as I have done here. So peplums are one of those um, types of garments that kind of go in and out of, um, fa not in and out of fashion, but they kind of go in and out depending on um, what's trending usually when it comes to the lower half of the body. For instance, when we're seeing a lot of you know skinny jeans or slim leg pants, Peplums tend to pop up a little bit more frequently just because it's a good balance to the skinnier part of the leg. Vice versa, when our pants get a little bit wider, when trends tend to go that way, um, you just notice that shirts get a little bit more cropped just to keep proportion um, in line with, um, you know, fuller bottoms. Usually the tops get a little bit more fitted and a little shorter. Um, not always, but that tends to be the case with um, trends and the way that you see things in ready-to-wear fashion. However, we sew. So that means we can just completely ignore what's going on in those trends and make things that we really like on our bodies. I am very straight through my waist and hips. I love a peplum on my body because it adds visual balance for my bust line onto my hip line. I have on this um, version that I've made here, I have shortened that peplum because I did want to, um, while balancing out my hips, I still wanted to be able to not overwhelm the fact that I'm wearing it with um, a flared jean, a wider leg jean. So I think this is a really fun way to wear peplums if you really like that on your body style like I do, while still playing around with some of the wider legs that are currently, um, we're seeing and ready to wear and in patterns and that sort of thing as well now. 
So that is what I've done on this version. Um, for this version on myself, I have actually made the size medium with a full bust. Another thing I love about Love Notions patterns is that their patterns do come with a full bust option. So those of us that are uh, greater, um, difference between our upper bust and full bust, it makes it much easier to fit these patterns to our body. So I have used the full bust front on this. Um, again, I've used the um, standard front. I've not used the princess seam front. And I did use the little flared skirt um, for my version. Now, I did trim this. As you can tell, I actually took six inches off the um, bottom, just off the hemline of the flared peplum so that I had the visual illusion of a peplum without it being too long. Um, because again, I'm trying to keep things in proportion with the wider leg jeans that I've got on with it. And I think this has really hit the mark. So there you have it. This is my uh, Margot Peplum, an absolutely wonderful pattern. But what if you are new to sewing knits or what if you've never sewn knits or what if you have sewn knits on your sewing machine and you've kind of fought with your machine? We're now gonna go through five tips to have a successful knit sewing project if you're using a sewing machine. Okay, so let's go over our five tips. Tip number one. I find that using stay tapes in certain parts of the garment can be extremely helpful when um, sewing with knits. I like to use a woven stay tape in my back shoulder seams. I find that this helps the um, sleeve, especially when you're using heavier fabrics that have viscose or rayon in them, such as this Ponte that I've used for my version. Um, the sleeves can become quite heavy because rayon or viscose is a heavier fiber. The heaviness in the sleeve can often distort the shoulder seam um, on your tops, and then you've got shoulders that are coming off their shoulder point, and things are stretching out, and your neckline stretches out, and it just doesn't have the longevity that it would have if you had stabilized that seam allowance. So I like to use a woven stay tape. These are the two that I, um, or the stay tape that I prefer using. So Keezy is just easy because it comes in uh, the width that I prefer, which is a half inch width. Um, I fuse this to the back of my the back of my shoulder seams. I leave the front shoulder seam alone, um, and this just helps my tops from stretching out, and again gives me more long longevity with my top. Another product that I really love when it comes to knits is um, the So Keezy double sided um, hem tape. I find that this not only helps you press up a hem either on your sleeves or on the bottom of a shirt um, evenly and keep that within that you know one inch. Um, everything is nice and uniform along that one inch line, but it also kind of acts as a stabilizer if you are using either a twin needle or if you're using a cover stitch machine. Either it helps with tunneling, um, so you're not getting that fabric that bunches up between those two stitching lines uh, when it comes to your uh, two needles that are on the front uh, with either the zigzag or the chain stitch on the back, depending which machine you are using. So those are my two favorite stay tapes to use for knits, and I find that they create a really professional finish when all is said and done. Okay, my second tip is a walking foot. Now, if you have a machine that has a dual feed on it, this it basically works the same as a walking foot. Um, most machines, though, do not have that dual feed capability. So definitely look at your user manual. See if you do have that dual feed. If you do, you just want to make sure that's engaged when you are sewing with your knits. If not, any machine can have... Um, can be supplied with a walking foot. You can buy these walking feet generically online. Um, you can buy them from your sewing machine dealer. They're really pretty easy to find. This is a common foot that is used by quilters um, because what this does is when you are sewing, it has feed dogs that are on the top that match the feed dogs that are on the bottom of your machine. Um, so it's feeding both the top and the bottom layers through equally. This helps with stretching of the fabric, just like it helps moving multiple layers through on a quilt. It does the same thing when it comes to knit fabrics. You really don't want that fabric um, stretching and distorting and having one layer pulling through um, faster than the other layer uh, because that it does create a wavy seam and can cause some um, bubbling and just unattractive seam lines when it comes to working with knits. You'll be much happier when you're using a walking foot uh, when it comes to sewing with your knits. Okay, tip number three is using the appropriate needle. Now, with 
most knits, you're running um, a needle that is often called a ballpoint needle. What this means is, is that the tip of the needle is actually a little bit rounded and it's not a sharp point, um, such as a needle that you might want to use for woven fabrics. The reason that this is um, beneficial is that that kind of, it's blunt. I mean, it's still going to hurt if you're putting your finger against it. But if you were looking under a microscope, you would see it's blunter than a sharp needle. This just helps the stitches slide in between the loops of the knitted fabric, as opposed to kind of slicing through the fabric like a um, microtex needle would do, for instance, on wovens. Now, they, while they do sell ballpoint needles, I have found the needles that are specifically stretch, and my preference is the Schmetz needles that are for stretch, are even better um, to use for knits, mostly because almost all of our knits now contain either a lycra or elastane component, and um, this stretch needle um, helps navigate that component as well. So my favorite needles to use when sewing with knits on a sewing machine are the Schmetz stretch needles. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes, so depending on the thickness of the fabric, um, I like to have a few different sizes of those in my needle stash. In addition to that, if you are wanting to have a little bit more of a professional hems on your knits, I highly recommend a double or twin needle. Now what a twin needle is, is it's a double needle on the top um, and you are actually gonna need two different um, threads going at the top of your machine for this one, um, but you're gonna have two separate threads going through those two needles and then the bottom uh, needle actually does a zigzag for you. So um, this creates just a really um, stretchy hem. So you're gonna, it's gonna look like a stretch stitch on the front of your garment, but then on the back, it's gonna do a zigzag there with the bobbin, which allows that hem to stretch so it can easily go on over your head or over your shoulders um, or up over hips, <laughs> depending on where the garment needs to stretch to then go back to its regular size. So highly recommend those um, if you're looking to up your, sew your sewing with knits game on a sewing machine. Next is a new-ish product that is now out on the market, and that is Stretch Thread. So quite a few of the different um, thread companies now make thread that stretches. Um, here I've got some Guterman, but again, uh, Mettler makes some, Coates and Clark makes some. There's stretch threads that are out there um, on the market everywhere, but they actually have some elastane in them. They actually do have a little give and a little bit of stretch. This can be wonderful for hems so that you, um, again, gives you even more um, elasticity when you're trying to stretch things. So if you're using twin needles, this can be very helpful to make that hem just a little bit stretchier, more in line with what a cover stitch machine would give you which is what most ready-to-wear companies would be using. Um, but the stretch thread it allows you to use a straight needle in a lot of different applications of knits without, or a straight stitch without having um, the worry of popping those stitches. And then finally, tip five are the stitches that you're gonna wanna use if you are sewing with knit fabrics. Number one is a zigzag stitch. Now. Um, if you are using um, a sewing machine that only has a couple of stitches on it, this is, the zigzag stitch is a really great one to use because it's going to have some give. You just want your seams that need to stretch, which are typically your horizontal seams um, that are going around the body. You want those to be able to stretch to go on over the wider parts of your body and then fit the smaller parts of your body. Um, but you definitely want to make sure you're using a stretch stitch in those um, terms. Also, if your machine comes with it, it looks like a little lightning bolt that is called a stretch stitch. Um, you can use that as well to give a little bit of give. If you're using a zigzag stitch and you want it to mimic a stretch stitch, um, I suggest just a width of one, um, length of 2.5, and that basically is creating your stretch stitch for you. So if you only have a couple of stitches available on your sewing machine, you can definitely play around with your zigzag to give you a straight-ish seam, um, but still give you the um, stretch that you need in order to uh, not pop stitches when you put it onto the body. Another one that a lot of people love using is called a triple stitch. This is actually where the machine goes forward and backward forward for each stitch. Now why this is a stretchy stitch is that each time the machine goes forward and forward and then backward, it does not go in the same place. It actually moves over just a little bit. It's hard to see with the naked eye. Um, which gives you a little bit more stretch uh, in that stitch as well. It's not the stretchiest stitch, but it will give you some stretch 
um, in that stitch. It does use a lot of thread because for every stitch, instead of just going from back to front, it's going back to front to back to front. So you're using three times the amount of thread for um, each stitch that you're doing. So just keep that in mind. But that is um, nice because it does look like a straight stitch when it's being sewn, um, you know, for top stitching and that sort of thing. And then again, if you are using that stretch thread, which I put that in both my top thread and my bobbin, um, you can use just a regular straight stitch. This is really great, again, for top stitching. Um, if you want to kind of create that cover um, stitch effect, but with using either a twin needle or just even a single needle, um, that stretch thread is really fun to play around with. And I highly recommend grabbing yourself a spool um, and just playing around with it and doing some tests on some scraps and seeing how much stretchier it is and how much give you get before stitches pop. So that is the key there for sewing with knit fabrics. So there you have it. Those are five tips to help you have a successful knit project if you're sewing on a sewing machine. I hope these were helpful, and I hope you'll give the Margot or the Maggie a try here sometime in the near future. Again, it is $5 today only um, for Feature Friday and a great one to grab for your pattern catalog. If you'd like to hear more about what I do over on YouTube, you can follow me on Tomcat Stitchery here on YouTube or go to my website, TomcatStitchery.com. I have those linked below, and uh, I'll be showcasing a little bit more about the Margot on my own channel today. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Friday, and we'll see you next time.